What's up everyone? Here we go with the weekly transits for the week of February 22nd to the 28th. Before we begin, I do have a little info for you guys. If you guys are wondering where you can find some free classes or courses in astrology, energy healing, and intuition, I highly recommend you guys come check out IITS, which is the International Institute for Temple Sciences uh, website, and I have it right here linked, and you can also click on the link in the description box below to go directly to them. I am teaching energy healing basics, uh, mini courses, uh, and then we're going to go into a master class later on this year. Uh, and then if you guys know who the Peace Dealer is, and if you don't know, uh, he is teaching a mini course in astrology. So we're just giving you guys the basics, and then we are working on our master courses later on this year. And then we also have Jax Atlantis, who is the CEO of IITS. He is going to be teaching a course in intuition. So come check out those courses. They are free, free, free. And if you guys can, please donate to our cause so that we can keep these free for all of you guys to enjoy. Come check it out if you can. Come donate if you can. And let's go ahead and begin. So, today, for Monday, February 22nd, there's really not much going on except for the moon is in Cancer right now. And so you're going to want to be more like... I, I guess like a homebody where you're going to want to spend more time with your family at home and making plans for possibly a future expansion of your home such as or a family <laughs> such as a, a new baby or, or things like that or even um, connecting deeply with your feelings and emotions today. So this is what you might be feeling at this time. So it's going to be a little bit less hectic I would say. <laughs> All right, moving on to Tuesday, we have Tuesday, February 23rd, Pluto and Capricorn, semi sextile, Pallas Athena in Aquarius. And this is kind of like, um, I would say last week, uh, Pallas was linked with Eris and Venus, and this kind of uh, was triggering the Pluto Eris square again but in more of like a harmonious way. So Pallas in Aquarius is open-minded and brings us information and actualizations or realizations that are really uh, transformative for all of us today. This is a time to be open to change, to allow change to come in and to navigate or allow the universe to navigate your path at this time, okay? So be willing to question everything, to figure things out for yourself, intuitively speaking, and and just believe whatever it is that you feel in your heart is correct, okay? So it is very important to pay attention to other people's uh, points of views as well as to be open-minded to that and to really come to a, I would say, collectively a center or a understanding between differences of opinions and things like that, okay? So very, very important for this to for this energy. And you can definitely work with this energy today, especially if you're having a difficulty with um, difficult people, <laughs> I would say, who might not be open to, to your point of view, okay? So just call, call in this energy to assist you with that, okay? So moving on to Wednesday, February 24th, um, we have Taurus, Trine, Pluto, and Capricorn. And this is about staying focused on the goals, okay? And be willing to uh, take another step towards that and actualizing, uh, you know, what it is that you are dreaming of bringing into this reality, okay? We're thinking long-term goals here, long-term rewards, long-term uh, success, long-term abundance and prosperity for this, okay? So the... Um, 
I would say anything that's like instant gratification is not something that you want at this time. So it's really important for for you to focus on that on on the aspects that um, you need to uh, make your goal successful in the long run and because we have two earth energies in this in this uh, transit it is very important to be focused on you know the foundation that you're building your dreams off of okay uh, whether it is your dreams of a coupling or or a long-term relationship focus on that foundation is their communication is their real love and respect between you two you know how did the relationship start things like that and then if you're thinking about career focus on the you know foundation with the career are you um setting yourself up for long-term uh success or or are you lacking in motivation you're you're are you uh procrastinating or are you still doubting that you can succeed in in whatever it is that you're trying to succeed in okay those are very important to to reflect upon with this energy especially because of the capricorn and taurus energy influencing this okay so moving on thursday february 25th uh, we have the Sun in Pisces, semi sextile Chiron in Aries. Uh, the Sun in Chiron is really good for deeper awareness uh, surrounding our wounding, okay, or or our past. Uh, when it comes to romantic wounding or even financial like stability like for example if you are having difficulties with money at this time and it's probably most likely due to the pandemic uh, but honestly maybe there this is an opportunity for you to think things through and think of a different career path you know what i mean like for example uh i had this this uh good talk with my daughter about her career goals she is a, a, an eighth grader but we've been she's been thinking about whatever she wants to be when she grows up since she was like i would say seven <laughs> So she already has it in her in her mind. So I asked her a couple of questions so that she could really evaluate, you know, the career path that she wants to take. And then since she's going to be going into high school next year, uh, there are some programs set up for her school that will help her even, you know, make strides towards that career or try to have like a mentor in that career field specifically, which is pretty awesome for, for her, you know, but for you guys, for example, you know, what is it that you really truly desire to do uh, with the rest of your life? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you want to be a counselor? Do you want to be a life coach? Do you want to be just a tarot reader? You know, whatever. Whatever that looks like, you really have to seek uh, you know, mentors or, or people that you know have succeeded in that uh, capacity or that you know can give you like some piece of advice uh, towards you trying to figure out whether you want to go that route or not, okay? So this is what this is going to help with, with money, okay? Especially if you guys feel like you're stuck in a dead-end job and it's definitely apparent because of this pandemic and you feel like you cannot, uh, you know, make strides in this career. So you have to think of, of a different direction uh, to maneuver your way into, okay? Uh, the, win the thing with relationships will be wounding regarding past relationships. So this is kind of like any type of uh, heartbreak, any type of uh, unrequited love, you know, any type of theme like that that's replaying itself in your relationships or have been replaying in past relationships it's time for you to look through that and really really seek the path of healing this time you know and and this can definitely be uh done during dream time so look at your dreams for any revelations uh any explanations any karmic patterning things like that okay so same day we have Venus moves out of Aquarius and into Pisces okay so this is shifting uh, from a water energy in I'm sorry from an air energy into a water energy and okay so the Venus is very very dreamy very uh, passionate 
but also there is there seems to be a very high heart uh, energy with this Venus but remember not to fall for somebody's uh, tricks with this Venus energy because uh, you know Pisces it's all about unconditional love empathy sensitivity and divine love but they are very idealistic very romantic and mystical but people could actually take it full advantage of that uh, especially if they they are kind of naive in, in so many ways especially with their ideal Realistic point of view with when it comes to love and romance, okay? So they might be putting you For example, this Piscean energy might be putting whomever you're dating in on a pedestal And then you might ignore the red flags about their personality Maybe they might be a controlling personality or manipulative and you might not even be aware of this uh, Because you're just so in love with love and you're so in love with them blah 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 you know whatever so make sure that you are watching out for the shadow aspect of venus and pisces which is codependency lack of boundaries and then putting people on a pedestal like i said before okay so moving on we have the sun in pisces sextile uranus and taurus and this is all about embracing change uh, embracing innovative ideas uh, opening yourself up to something new, a, a new exploration, a new way of thinking, new possibilities. Uh, the sun in Pisces is super intuitive and dreamy. And then you got Uranus, who is in the higher mind uh, energy. And this brings a lot of awareness and under understanding of the intuition that you might be feeling or the dreams that you might be having coming in from the conscious and the unconscious, okay? So you might be exploring these these sides of yourself even more here, but it's gonna be a perfect balance of the mystical or the intuitive and the logical, okay? And expansive. Moving on, we have Jupiter in Aquarius, trines the mean north node in Gemini. Um, so this is kind of like all month long where you've had a lot of uh, activations in the North Node by Aquarius planets uh, such as Sun in Aquarius, Sun in Mer uh, Aquarius and Mercury, Aquarius and Venus, and now we have Aquarius, Jupiter and Aquarius. Um, so Saturn will try in the North Node in April. So right from now until then, pay close attention to any type of uh, change especially when when you feel like a door is closing and another opportunity is just waiting over that corner okay so that's how it's gonna feel like you might be kind of distraught with the cycle ending or that door closing but you have to be open to see the good in in this okay or to see the lesson in it all right as well as the opportunity in that so let's see so this is definitely going to help with uh, joining forces with other people who are like-minded or kindred spirits, uh, who are committed to to having an open mind and open dialogue, uh, you know, a debate, and who are interested in truly establishing a community of uh, growth mindset, and and you know. I would say humanitarian assistance as well as compassion, okay? Jupiter rules the south node right now and that is trying the north node, sextile the south node. This is a very harmonious uh, interaction uh, with both nodes that bring amazing uh, convergence of the past and the future or the old and new. So right now it's super uh, like pa balanced energy and so take full advantage of that, especially if it is that you are trying to, you know, release things from the past in order for you to bring in beautiful new energy to create your future, okay? Do, 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 do. Moving on, we have Friday, February 26, Jupiter and Aquarius, Quincux, retrograde Vesta in Virgo. Um, so this is Vesta in Virgo is kind of like very 
interested in discernment and being clear about their intentions, seeing and reading between the lines and getting to the facts and the details here, okay? Jupiter and Aquarius, on the other hand, is super expansive and interested more in the uh, the the ways of the ascended mind. So it's like kind of like um, they gravitate towards um, thinking outside the box, so to speak, okay? So I would say with this, uh, especially with these states of energies surrounding, you know, Jupiter and Aquarius, you might be overdoing it on the expansion shit. <laughs> it might be an issue because of that energy. So just make sure that you're more grounded in in, in the earth plane uh, because you want to try to take off and travel off into the etheric as much as possible. But it's very important for you to be more Vesta and Virgo with this energy, okay? So balancing that out, all right? Because we are in Pisces season, so yes, you have that hit of Pisces season in there too. So it's very important to to be grounded, especially during the season. All right, the Sun in Pisces, semi sextile Saturn in Aquarius, and so here we got the Sun in Saturn is really good for you know taking on responsibilities, boundaries, and grounding, particular with the Sun because it's in. Pisces, Saturn brings in some solid energy that can help us with sustaining our visions, our goals, and our ideals, and making it happen, okay, instead of just dreaming about it. So it is definitely something that can be useful for us, especially the Saturn uh, in Aquarius energy. Moving on, we have the Sun in Pisces, semi-square Eris in Aries. And this is, you know, the sun in Pisces wants to be like behind the veil and in the mists and the mists of Avalon and <laughs> other worlds and traveling in the spirit world and being high as a kite. Uh, but <laughs> this can be also a shadow side, meaning that you want to escape or check out of reality. So Aries can be incoming kind of like a slap in the face so to speak to get you back into reality and grounded again so we want to really uh have um a healthy relationships with with our emotions particularly with our anger and our um disappointment and rage uh and not bypassing it okay so that's definitely a Piscean shadow aspect where we ignore it or we, we pretend that it doesn't exist. <laughs> or we pretend like, oh, I had a blow up the other day, you know, like I raged on someone and then and then we just the next day we're just pretending like we're best friends again. So that's that's something that a Piscean energy will try to uh, coax you into. Uh, so very important to have a good relationship with our emotions for this day okay so moving on we have mars and taurus square Pallas athena in aquarius with two uh war gods going head to head here we you're gonna find a lot of uh fiery energy and and a lot of uh just i would say just action energy too so mars is also aligned with Algol, the star of Medusa. And if you look at Greek mythology, especially if you look at the what happened with Pallas Athena and, and how he she helped Perseus uh you know kill Medusa, chop off her head. <laughs> and you know what's fun you know what's messed up about it too is like when you really read the mythology, we had okay, so Medusa was a worshipper uh, you know, in Athena's temple, and then she got raped, right, by Poseidon. And instead of Athena punishing Poseidon, she decides to punish the victim here. So, so yeah, like Medusa got turned into freaking, you know, freaking multiple snaked <laughs> haired beast or whatever. And so anyway, to me, that was kind of messed up. 
but but then she does her wrong once more by helping Perseus kill her too. So it's kind of like, what the hell? So there's a definite struggle between the masculine and feminine energy right here. And it's playing out between these two, uh, you know, between Pallas Athena and, and Mars, you know. And, and so just watch out for this because we also see in Greek, Greek mythology how, you know, um, Ares who was the god of war, did not like Athena, you know, because she was also considered a goddess of, of war, but also tech, she was a tactician. And and so she was the favorite daughter of uh, their father, you know, uh, Zeus. And so they hated each other. There's always a rivalry between each other, you know, too. So again, there's going to be like this weird rivalry, this real, very real uh, energy of anger, resentment, remorse, and rejection of, of the opposite sex. So it could just be if you were, if you are feeling, uh, that, uh, you know, towards someone of the opposite sex or even towards yourself, you know, it's very important for you to look into that energy and, and deal with it. Okay. Moving on, we have retrograde Vesta in Virgo squares the mean north the mean nodes of the moon. So we have the T-square between um, this asteroid and of course nodes of destiny and karma. So we are kind of like at a crossroads here with this energy. We are going to have to really think about growth and how to move forward with our lives so that we can create the future that we truly desire. Like we have to really ask ourselves, what is it that is preventing me from moving forward? What is it that makes me feel like I'm stuck? What is magnifying uh, this need for me to remain, uh, you know, the same or, or fear change? You know, things like that are going to be coming up, okay? And so we really are trying to seek the truth here, okay? Um, and of course, beginning anew because we have the North Node in Gemini asking us to come back to the beginning, come back to to a more happier time or a more curious and open and, and willing to change or willing to be taught uh, state of mind, okay? So this is very important uh, for this energy. So if you're feeling that way, you're feeling frustrated with the direction of your life and where it's headed, then work with this energy and it'll help you out, okay? All right, moving on to Saturday, February 27th. So we have the full moon in Virgo. And then um, we also have um, Aquarius and Virgo are quincux each other. So meaning that they are having a hard time getting uh, getting uh, together, <laughs> like, like, like being friendly. <laughs> and understanding each other, right? So Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, of course, and this is the planet of the higher mind. And then Virgo is ruled by Mercury, the planet of the lower mind. So one is more transpersonal, and then the other one is more personal, okay? Aquarius is interested in the bigger picture, the, the uh, you know, seeing the broader scope of a situation, thinking outside the box, right? And then you have Virgo, who is an earth sign, and this one is, tends to be more about the health and balance of the body and mind here, okay? Uh, and so then we have the full moon that can magnify where our own split mind is, so where our high mind and our low mind are split, you know? and then it can illuminate that as well as um, make it very difficult for us to to really feel like we are balanced here okay so it's super important for us to really uh you know allow ourselves to transition in between both of the minds not just choose one over the other okay so it's very important for that all right so if you guys are doing a full moon ritual this week, I highly recommend that you you focus on Virgo energy um, and you collect things that are very Virgo. Okay, so like plants, herbs, uh, you know, even um, 
making things neat or or making sure that you connect with the virgin um energies such as like athena uh you know i think it's uh whomever whichever goddess was considered a virgin i highly recommend that you connect with them their their energy okay it's very uh powerful feminine energy that you can work with for this uh full moon especially for manifestation rituals oh and white for some reason i keep seeing white purification that's that's like what the guides are saying they're like purification pure energy working with the color white will definitely help you guys with manifesting okay so moving on we have sunday february 28th there's not really much going on uh only that the moon is still in virgo here uh and then of course the start of the day trines both pluto and mars in the morning and then we also have a grand earth trine in the works that day as well so this is good for health and grounding and well-being uh and then the moon shifts into um you know libra and this is focusing on partnerships and balance and beauty in life okay so that's all i have for the aspects for today so let's go ahead and move on with our reading all right here we go here is our tarot for the week so we have our main card here which is the star so i know it's been a lot of heavy energy out there lately especially with all of this these restrictions with all these changes going on god even with the freaking gas you guys gas prices going up geez i don't know where you guys live but i mean where i live is super cheap still but i cannot even imagine like california like how freaking expensive it is out there so anyway um the star is your kind of like your sign here that things are getting better you guys your dreams are finally coming true okay um you know happy times are ahead um you know you made the changes that you needed to make in order for you to gain the rewards coming in from the universe okay so long-term plans and long-term goals are finally starting off or moving forward here okay so you're on the right path and this is your sign so if you were wondering what the hell's going on <laughs> this is your sign <laughs> all right so next one this is for monday and tuesday we have the three of water perfect so because we are in a water energy right now we're in a pisces energy we have a lot of dreamy a lot of idealistic energy coming in but it, this is definitely a time for you to celebrate and to really enjoy the piscean energy here bringing it into your life uh, you know allowing yourself to be more compassionate more loving more understanding more unconditional love i would say than than anything when it comes to relationships in particular Particularly when it comes to your romantic relationships okay and so this is all about celebrating celebrating the good times ahead celebrating your new job celebrating your new promotion celebrating the new baby coming in celebrating your new marriage your new relationship whatever you know this is definitely a good time celebrate good times yeah all right so then we have for Wednesday and Thursday, the night of earth. So for you guys who are waiting for that night in shining armor, here he is. <laughs> he's taking his, he's taking his time, but he's very re like kind of like assured of himself. He's, he's taking uh, the proper steps towards you. Okay. So this is about like, those guys or girls who are waiting for a sign from the universe about the one okay i also feel like this has a lot to do with your relationships right now especially the ones that you feel uh are gonna go somewhere you know stay stability things like that career stability this this actually um feels like it's definitely um you know the abundance that you've been waiting for is definitely coming in as well uh you're gonna honor all of your goals they're gonna be successful things like that so yeah so this is a good card to have as well so it's just it's just telling you how all of the work that you did here you know like well before that all of the work you, you did uh, before this week is finally coming uh you know your abundance is coming in okay so moving on we have 
the queen of air for the weekend. And this is definitely about you making clear, concise choices for your future and making sure that you are expanding your horizons, expanding your circle of friends, your, your, um, I would say even your work relationships, like networking, things like that, in order for you to move forward in a, in a better uh, and more stable um, future here, okay? Because we need other people to make us uh, successful too, okay? It's not just one, you know, the lone wolf anymore. You you have to definitely start making strides and making friendships and, and you know, working with other people here, okay? Uh, so definitely a very realistic type of card but overall this week is going to be very good for everyone I feel like everything that has transpired before this week just made room for this good energy to come in for everyone okay whether it is that you're waiting for a relationship or you're in one and you're trying to see if you could take a break from from all the craziness then here it is okay you you definitely will this this week okay all right so that's all i have for you guys thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week Bye bye